Welcome to the Systematic Magic Podcast with Vance Morris. How to outserve, outmarket, and outprice your competition in any economy. Based on Vance's 10-year career with the Walt Disney Company. Every episode is jam-packed with strategies, tactics, and examples to propel your business to the next level. The episodes are quick and to the point. You are meant to take action. As Vance says, you won't profit unless you implement. Now, on to our episode. You typically don't hear about the failures of Walt Disney. Some of his failures were minor, like the time Walt previewed Snow White and the Seven Dwarves at a college. The students walked out halfway through the movie. Walt was devastated and severely depressed. However, the truth was the students only left because of a college curfew that was in place at the time. One of his major failures was the premiere of Pinocchio. For the opening day movie, Walt had the catastrophic idea of using little people, midgets, dressed as Pinocchio, dancing and greeting the children as they entered the theater. The actors were placed on the top of the marquee to do their routine. Walt figured that since they were going to be up there a few hours, that he would provide them with food, which never got eaten, and wine. Good to the last drop. The diminutive people proceeded to get drunk and hurl insults at the arriving guests. Eventually, some of them decided it was too hot and started dancing around naked until the cops showed up. To say the least, Walt was mortified. This was back in the 1940s. But did this incident stop Walt? Of course not. Just look at the company today. So what do 11 drunk midgets have to do with your business? Failures, however spectacular, do not have to define you. Sure, they can shrug off little problems and failures, but what about the big doozies? How you react and recover from large, sometimes embarrassing failures is all up to you. Will you just crawl into a remote cave, curl up into the fetal position, and live off of tree bark? Or will you show tenacity, resolve, and even greater creativity despite the failure? You decide. Now, think back to some of the companies that you have done business with lately, especially the ones with the all-too-annoying customer service phone hell. You know, the one, press one for this, press two for that. Recently, I had the displeasure of going through UPS's lack of customer service department, as they had delivered a rather large box to one of the other tenants in my building. So begins my epic struggle to navigate one of UPS's service prevention departments. Now, I am not a big follower of directions particularly when the automated voice on the other end of the phone is speaking so slowly. I figured that I have a 90% chance of reaching a human just by hitting the zero button. So on occasion, uh, excuse me, so on this occasion, when I, uh, once I finish smashing the zero multiple times, and after a nine minute hold, I reached Wendy, who really did not sound like a Wendy, but uh, you know, that's for another day. So, and Wendy worked in the missing packages department. So here's what I said. UPS delivered my package to the wrong address. Can you help me find it? Wendy says, so the package was delivered. Do you know who signed for it? Me, (laughs) and flabbergasted, said, no, that's why I'm calling you. Well, Wendy said, I see that it was signed for last week by someone with the last name of Cotton. Do you know anyone with that last name? No. And Wendy says, well, it was delivered. And I had to reply, yes, but not to me. Wendy says, I need to open an investigation. And I asked her, can't you just call the distribution center, which is all of two blocks from my office, and have someone go and ask the other seven tenants? Wendy cut me off. No, sir, that's not my job. (laughs) So I asked her, I said, you got to be kidding me. Did you really just say that? Wendy says to me, I can only open an investigation. And here's the kicker. She actually said this, I can't really do anything. Not my job is a phrase that can get you quickly disciplined or terminated in my world. All employees are part of the same company, serving the same guests, just in different capacities. 
Back in the day, when I managed Chef, Rick, Chef Mickey's restaurant at the Contemporary Resort, we had a bout of, it's not my job, when it came to cleaning up after a sick guest. So we gathered all the employees from the restaurant team, the culinary team, the dishwashers, and the housekeeping department to get their input and involvement. The bottom line being, the mess had to get cleaned up and cleaned up quickly. The hourly employees came up with an ingenious process to clean up the mess, coming together to remain true to Disney's core service mission, serving the guests. The whole team is laser focused on creating a memorable guest experience and not on turf, divisions, and who is responsible for what. Let me repeat that in case you missed it. The hourly employees came up with the solution, not the supervisors, not the managers, and certainly not a vice president. Do you have a service prevention department, or worse, several of them? ticking off your clients and guests on a daily basis and preventing great service and profits from occurring. Now is the time to investigate and fix it. I recommend to all my clients that they have frequent meetings with their frontline employees with only one question on the agenda. What have our clients been complaining about this month? Then brainstorm how to fix it. Two things happen here. First and foremost, your customer service experience will improve. And second, you demonstrate that you value the input of your employees. So until next time, remember, you won't profit unless you implement. Thanks for listening to the Systematic Magic Podcast. If you like what you heard, go to our website, deliverservicenow.com, so you do not miss a single strategy. Join Vance's crusade to eliminate poor client or patient experiences around the world. Go to deliverservicenow.com right now.